Welcome to Lab 5 on the Thin Lens Model of the Eye. The Thin Lens Model of the Eye is a single thin lens and one screen for the retina. If we have parallel light coming into this, it forms a clear image on the retina. We call that point the far point. It's the point where an object will be to be in focus for the relaxed eye. So for the emetropic eye, the far point is at optical infinity. If we add some power to the lens, that models accommodation. We'll add 3.5 diopters in this case, and we'd see parallel rays would focus in front of the retina, not a clear image. But that means the eye could focus on something closer. We call the fully accommodated object location the near point. That's where the clear image will form for the accommodated eye. If we have an eye that's too long to form a clear image, that eye is myopic. The image forms in front of the retina if the object is at infinity. Instead, that eye can clearly see objects at its far point. For the myope, the far point is not at optical infinity. It's at some location in front of the eye. We can correct this by adding a contact lens, which is located at the eye, or a spectacle lens, which is located some distance upstream from the eye. In this lab, we'll model that at 16 centimeter distance. We begin by autocollimating a plus five diopter lens. We'd expect that to be located about 20 centimeters downstream from the light source. Next, you'll add a plus 10 diopter lens at the other end of the bench. That will serve as the crystalline lens and cornea for our model eye. We can find a clear image with this lens, and that means we've set up an emetropic eye. So we're here we have the setup for part one, plus five diopter lens, auto collimated. We should have parallel light leaving. This is at 20 centimeters downstream from the light source. And then we have our eyeball with the plus 10 diopter lens here and the retina here. And you notice we've left some space to move this retina. For part two, we have added a plus 3.5 diopter lens to represent accommodation, and you'll notice this image is no longer clear. To find the near point of the eye, we can simply I'll remove this collimating lens and move this light source until we find a clear image. Now we've located the near point by finding a clear image on the retina. The object location for the fully accommodated eye that forms a clear image is the near point. For part three, we've gone back to having the 5 di after lens autocollimated. Again, it's located 20 centimeters downstream from the light source. And we're back to our emetropic eye with the plus 10 lens here and a clear image on the retina. Now you'll calculate the amount you should move this retina. Actually, you calculate the direction you should move the retina forward or backward to represent a myopic eye. Please do that ahead of time. I've moved this retina 3.8 centimeters in the direction that's required to make it myopic, and you'll see the image is no longer clear. Once again, remove the light, uh, the plus five diopter lens, and move the light source in order to locate the position that gives a clear image on the screen. In this case, that location is called the far point of the eye because it is unaccommodated. Here we have the light source location, the plus 10 diopter lens, and a clear image on the retina. Remember, this is a myopic eye without accommodation. So this location of the light source is the far point. Once again, I've autocollimated the plus 5D lens. This represents parallel light or an image, sorry, an object at optical infinity. And we have still our myopic eye, again, with a blurry image because the myope cannot see objects at optical infinity. We're going to add a contact lens to correct this vision. So you want to calculate the expected power needed and then use that lens at your bench. I've pulled the lens that is closest to the calculated, val calculated value and then we'll do our classic test. What do you think is better? One or two? With the contact lens or without? You can tell that is a vast improvement for the clear image that's formed with that corrective contact lens. For part four, I've added a spectacle lens holder 16 centimeters upstream from the front of the eye, so we can test spectacle lens correction. 
Before the lab, you should calculate the expected power necessary for spectacle lens correction. That way in lab, you can come in and simply test that hypothesis. So again, we can compare the blurry image. You can see the shadow there. That's the blurry image without the spectacle correction. With the spectacle lens in place, you see a clear image formed on the retina. Without the spectacle, with the spectacle. The image is smaller, but you can see the clear cross formed in the middle.